Hello everyone and welcome to Mythic Mountains RPG. Uh, Mythic Mountains RPG is a private online play club. Uh, at Mythic Mountains we play indie and folk tabletop role-playing games. Folk role-playing games are those games, uh, not a brand, those things that uh, indie tabletop role-playing games, uh, homebrew um, uh, games uh, that are available to anyone. Um, and they're not uh, controlled by a company or a brand or ideology or anything like that. And tonight we're going to play one of those games called Half Jinx. Uh, Half Jinx is uh, a Kickstarter currently, and uh, uh, by Barrel Rider Games and James Spawn. And uh, the Kickstarter is going to launch soon. Uh, I'm not going to go over the rules of the game. We're just going to uh, the the players and I have already talked about the game. They've prepared a halfling, which is uh, what this game is about. We're just going to hop in and play. See how it goes. Uh, I'm joined this evening by uh, my friends Glenn, who is playing Briar, Bri Brian Briarfoot, and my friend Josh, who's playing Pluck Indlestick. And uh, uh, they are halflings. Uh, halflings are little small folk that live in the pastoral hills, woods, and farmlands of uh, a community of halfling shires known as the Burrows. Uh, for a halfling, life is simple. Uh, folks are content to tend their homes and gardens and gossip and celebrate the simplicity of life. But these halflings are youngins, and so they often get up into trouble. And that's what they're going to do tonight. Um, so, um, you are all... from the Halfling Borough of Westwick. Now, you may have to zoom in because the points of interest are kind of tiny. Um, so, Westwick. Westwick sits within the rolling hills uh, looking down uh, from flower-covered knolls and well-tended fields. And you can see, as you crest the hills, uh, coming in from the other side, across from the thicket wood, this map, by the way, is oriented up is south. Um, and um, if you were to approach from across the hills, you could perhaps first see the chimney smoke of cook fires that rise into a clear blue summer sky. And um, today, in uh, Westwick, um, there is a revel. A revel is a time of food and fellowship in one of your communities. And uh, the purpose of this revel is the uh, 111th birthday of old boring bando good old boring bando he's one of the eldermen of the town sits at the city gates smokes his pipe debates uh, grand philosophy and deep thoughts with many of the other elder hobbits sorry halflings um, and um, so a revel has been declared in his honor and at the end of this revel there is intended to be a grand fireworks display for for the 111th birthday of Bando. The, the Wizard Grey is in town and a whole cartload of fireworks. So, um, these fireworks are seem to be guarded by a group of strange fairies. And um, you have each resolved uh, you young halflings to commit a conspiracy a great hubbub if you will uh, your goal is to make it to Gray's fireworks and find a way past the fairy magic to set them all off all of them once in a massive display of explosions and lights um so, to win the game of Half Jinx, and to pull off your Half Jink, 
Um, you have to accomplish this before nightfall, which is the end of the game session. If you do that, you get to level up and progress, and you get a point in one of your attributes. Um, you have to do that before time runs out, uh, before you run out of comfort while managing food, because halflings have to eat every hour. Um, and uh, all of this while facing off with dangers and events and distractions and obstacles and nosy other halflings. So, um, here you are, and the revels are well underway. And um, you see many of your friends, people that you know. Um, you have seen Gray come into town. However, while he parks his cart outside the town hall, he leaves the cart with its guards, goes into the town hall, closes the door, and um, the, uh, the mayor, old Mayor Richfoot, doesn't leave. There's not even a proper announcement of the rebels. But um, outside, everyone is already having a grand time. And they've been putting it together for the better part of a 10 day. And uh, there's uh, games outside and drinking contests and smoking contests and chicken chasing contests and all sorts of things that are going on outside. Um, and um, yeah, you know exactly where the cart is. You can see its guards. And um, actually, let me go back to the map and kind of describe it real quick, and then I'll toss it, up, toss the ball over to y'all. Want festival? Uh, I'll point out some things that you can see here. Here is. The town hall. It is a two-story building. Uh, it has those, I can't remember what they're called, but the kind of medieval style roofs that uh, go off to the side. Um, wood building. And uh, Gray's cart is just off to the side. Uh, this is the town square. In the town square is the statue of Saradoc, the founder of, uh, of Westwick. And... Um, you have the extra helping in just across from it, and the smell of fresh bread and ales waft into the air, as well as many pies, and there is a pie eating contest. Uh, and um, there's a group of young halflings that are playing in the town square, and a great many chairs and tables and tents that are set up where people are just drinking and reveling. Um, what do you do? Mm. Okay, well, so our, our fireworks cart is guarded, so we can't immediately just go get those. We need to get those guards away somehow. We and, need some and kind of a fairies? You said they were fairies, correct? Yes, these do not look like halflings. These are small and thin and have pointy ears, and uh, they wear... Um, not so much clothes as, uh, as as it looks as if their clothes are woven from the forest itself. These are some do, sort of fairy creature. Do they look like they can fly? Uh, you don't see any wings or anything. Wings, okay. Hmm. What do you think, Brian? Um, let's see. Do we know anything about fairies? I don't think so. Maybe we can I cause don't know a bit a whole of a lot. Maybe if we I... can somehow cause a bit of a ruckus at this with all these people eating, it might distract the fairies. Hmm. What do you think? I think there's a pie eating contest going on or something. 
I must say, I'm pretty drawn to the pies. Well, let's Don't go see if we good. can do something about these pies. Oh yeah, they smell maybe, delicious. Maybe, uh, maybe we can like uh, get some and throw them in people's faces and cause a scene. Oh, and then and one of us can. Maybe the fairies will get. I don't know. I bet you those fairies are pretty stuck on what their mission is, but I really don't know. Okay. So you depart the town square and you you head to um uh let's see here to the extra helping in. Maybe we should find out what fairies like. Is there someone that might know that? Maybe we can tempt them with a some kind of yeah something. Maybe we should ask somebody. Maybe we know what. Maybe somebody here knows what fairies like. Maybe they like pie. Yeah. Ah, uh, pie. Why wouldn't they like pie? They do eat, don't they? Oh well, yeah. Everybody likes pie. <laughs> you would think. Um. All right. So let's see here. Trying to find fairies. fairy is what's listed as all right here we are so they're mischievous uh opposite the town hall stands westwick's other of two two-story buildings the extra helping in its first level is built of stone and mortar small round windows and a large square door permitting the light to stream inside the second floor is of heavy wooden logs and it's like many of the homes are here uh, it's got a roof of wooden shingles and a squat chimney that puffs um, vigorously smoke for all the cooking that's been going on. Uh, inside, there's a large common room with tables and stools, uh, but it's not a tavern. This is a place to eat, and there's laughter and merriment filling the air along with the smell of... Um, smell cooking. It seems that this year an eating contest has been put here. It's usually held at the Open Skies Pub. This year they're cooking and cooking and cooking. And it looks like there's an odd bit of cooperation this year between the uh, the, the owners of the pub and, uh, and this uh, restaurant, the inn. And um, there are people about to dig into some pies to see who can eat them the fastest and be crowned the prince or princess of pie. Hmm. Do we see okay. any... Go ahead. No, oh, go hey, ahead. Bird. I was just going to say, do we go see ahead, any... Man. Are all the pies out for everyone to view or does it look like they're... Like sitting in the back. Oh no, possibly. they're totally they're totally out for everyone to view. You mm. can actually see all the freshly baked pies actually lined up on the counter, ready to be uh, devoured as part of the contest. They smell. And I'm guessing they're they're all surrounded by all these contestants and judges. Now, Brian, let's be clever here. Maybe we f find out. Now, I want a pie just as much as you do. But I think you're thinking about stealing a pie. Maybe we shouldn't do that until we find out I was what thinking the about fairies like. A pie. Okay. I was just wondering, just in case we need to borrow a pie. Well, oh, okay. Maybe we can buy a pie. Oh, um, and and everyone, this is my friend, uh, Ernie, who is playing Daffodil Tutafay. To, to, to no, the fat. Toe tough it. To, 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 to tough it. 
Toe it's a respectable toes. family name. Oh, I know the Toe Tuffets, and he goes on and on and on <laughs> about the Toe Tuffets. They already have, like, lost a part of the day because they've been distracted by Pi, and now they're talking about the Toe Tuffets a good while. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hey, we're, we're just young hobbits, okay? <laughs> so, we were okay. talking about borrowing a pie. I, I like this idea. Okay, yes, we were talking about well, borrowing a pie. We're trying to find out... We were hoping to, to maybe distract the fairy guards with some food or some sort. I have a chicken! Oh, no. She you has what? a chicken. Oh. <gasps> mm. And I got wine. I have a first chicken named Nugget, and he is um, good when he wants to be. Hmm. Well, mm, his prize family rooster. His lineage dates back generations. Maybe, maybe we should try to talk to the fairies too. Hmm, just maybe they'll tell us what they like. I don't know. Maybe. What do y'all think? I forgot I have this wine, a bottle of nice wine that I took from my parents' wine cellar, and a corkscrew to open it. I Maybe brought some wine too, like right? Wine. Mm. Oh my god. That, I bet you they do. They seem to be we like should... in tune with nature. And na wine is such a natural thing, you know? I, I mean, yeah. Exactly. Okay, so we got some proposals on the table. Let's uh, let's come to a consensus. Let's see. What about Daffodil? What do you think? Yeah. Do you do you know what we're trying to accomplish here? Borrowing a pie. Well, we are trying to get the fireworks that are guarded by fairies. Wow. At the side of the the town center or inn or something. So we thought we might distract them with some food, but I don't know. That's Asking their opinions about the pies, maybe. What do fairies uh, like? Yeah, That's well, what we're trying to find let me, out. Let me back up, because like. so th some things that Daffodil would know. Um, so, uh, this is a revel that has been declared in Westwick for the 111th birthday of old, boring old Bando. And uh, the thing is... Gray is in town, uh, and he has brought a cartload of fireworks. Now, Gray will be judicious in the use of these fireworks, and they will be set out properly, uh, some of them at night. A glorious display of light. Uh, but, um, but you aim to turn that around and have them set off all at once. Um, and there are two fairies guarding the wagon. The wagon is next to the town hall. Gray has went into Town Hall, and Mayor uh, Richfoot has not left the Town Hall, and did not even announce the beginning of the Rebels. People just took to singing and drinking and dancing and playing games. We might be able to use the wine to bribe the fairies, and then we can just um, set off all the fireworks during the pie eating contest that's going to happen in just a few minutes. Mm. Mm. You know how much of a interruption that would be? People would be so startled they would probably throw the pies everywhere or drop the pies. So let, let's let's cascade some options and pick one see how it goes. So we got an option to offer wine as a bribe. We've got an option to um, cause a distraction with the pies uh, and cause enough of a ruckus to try to pull the fairies away or draw their attention. And then we've got an option of taking some of the pies and using them as a bribe. And then I suppose a fourth option is go and ask. Oh, a fifth option. Are we able to set off the fireworks where they're at? You can try. I mean, uh, we just need something flammable and maybe the fairies distracted long enough to accidentally toss it over. Maybe a good pipe that's overly lit and, you know, trip and there you go. 
don't want to hurt the fairies. Right? Well, let's vote. Uh, so <laughs> let's start with uh, Brian Briarfoot. So those five options, which should which should you vote? I vote, let's go ask the fairies. Very Brian, well. that is my vote as well. Okay. Does that sound okay, uh, Daffodil? Yeah, I want to talk to the fairies. Oh, yes, I totally agree with that. With the option to uh, cause a ruckus if uh, they prove sure. um, to be stuck up, adult, boring. Yeah, we should get a feel for them. Maybe they're not maybe very they good. Like guys maybe and they'll come talk with us. Maybe they're not very good guards, and won't be a problem at all. Okay, so you. Um... You take a whiff of the pies, and uh, after a while, you decide to gather your things and scutter back across the uh, the open town square, dodging the revels and half-drunken sorts and dancers and stuff, and excusing me and pardon me and uh, and everything your way through. Um, a few of the older halflings sitting out among the festivities, seeming only to watch and not partake, give you an eye. But no one interferes, and no one asks you any questions, and you make it over to the cart where the fairies are. Uh, now, do you want to sneak up on the cart, or do you want to just come talk to them? Or, well, you said you want to talk to them. Who, who talks to them? Us has the best. Oh, I got a. Uh, it would be cleverness. Cleverness. Right? Who's got the best cleverness? I have a seven. Not as clever as I'd like to be. Oh, I... Or could we just simply I saunter up and uh, pretend to be? Um, which I mean, it wouldn't be so much pretending. Interested in the fairies, and they are a bit of a unique thing, well, are they not? And we could just as if they're hungry or need something to drink. We never haven't yeah. really seen you around. You're amazing. Can we talk to you? What's, what's your cleverness, Daffodil? Um, eleven. Hmm, Daffodil, you should do Ooh. the talking. You should do it. Yeah, I only got a cleverness of nine. Uh, these uh, are obviously fairy creatures. They are actually smaller than halflings. Humanoid, thinner, um, and pointed ears, and it looks as if their clothes are made of the forest themselves. Um, they both prance from their place of uh, uh, where they're kicking their feet on the edge of the wagon as soon as you approach and grin. They grin capriciously as you come to them. Look, we have visitors. Oh, oh. so delightful. You look so lovely. Yes, I am. Clicks his heels together. Now, I hope you don't mind our fascination. We haven't seen too many fairies, and you are... Well, quite wonderful, and we were curious, and we're wondering if we could uh, maybe have a word. You want a word? <laughs> a word. Mm. Well, if you want a word, you'll have to win a word. A word will go a long <laughs> like way. A game? Why, yes. The other one uh, uh, says, um, he just said... <laughs> He says, give me food and I will grow, but give me drink and watch me die. What? And he dances. Ooh. Sounds like he wants food. No, it's a riddle. It's a riddle. Mm. Well, make him grow. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Nope, none of those noises are correct. Ha <laughs> <laughs> He dances around and like kicks no. you each in the bum. You, you, you see him poof, disappear, poof, kicks you in the bum, poof, 
<laughs> and, uh, you each lose uh, you each lose one comfort from cleverness. Oh, oh no! Each of you start with six comfort, I believe. Yep. Yeah, our standard six, and then we lose it. It's kind of like our HP in a way. And then poof, mm. the, the appears next to you again. <laughs> You st would you like to get a word? Mm. Do you want to try again, Daffodil? Oh. I thought it would be more of a fun game. Uh, you want a fun, me. Game. a fun game? They start to argue amongst each other. She wants it fun. fun. I, it, it was it, fun. She didn't think it was fun. We have to do better. She's our guest. And they uh, they start arguing amongst each other for a moment. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh. I, I'm going to try and interrupt their, uh, uh, their arguing and say, well, don't be so upset. Why not here? And um, Brian is going to pull out his bottle of wine. And he says, we like the word game. So some of that one very hard. You offer the wine, and what do you say? You're breaking up. Sorry, Glenn. Uh, here, take it. Oh, sorry. Yeah. For the, the wine, they said the word game was very hard. How about we try a game of hide and seek? Ooh, that one's hide a fun and seek. Game. One of them claps his hands. Yes, Good I love that Brian. game. I have a feeling they'll be better at this than we are, though. But I think we need to set some rules. Oh. Like, no moving when you pick a hiding yeah. spot. You can't use your fairy magic. Yeah, and you can't turn invisible. Yeah. <laughs> Just like... <laughs> That's no fun. Um, let's see here. Um... Yeah, but we can't move. Can't move from your hiding spot. Oh, well, we can't. We can't move our hiding spot. Sorry, Glenn. I can't. I, you're breaking up. Once you pick a hiding spot, you just move around. Nah, I don't know. Okay, so uh, let's see here. Um, but Glenn, roll a d6. Okay, hopefully it's done breaking up. We do have a storm rolling in. Ooh, sounds good so. now. Yeah, so far it sounds good, yeah. Roll okay. a D six. A D I got a five. That doesn't sound fun at all. Uh and then um let's see. But this was a fun game. So, it's clear that you're here to set off old Gray's fireworks. Oh. So I tell you what. Oh, yes. So I tell you what. I will give you a word. And he whispers a word into, uh, into your ear. And it's a wonderful word. And only you know the meaning of this word. It's a fairy word. And uh, each of you are now merry. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. And, uh, and then he says... If you'd, if you'd like to get to the fireworks, you either have to get through us, I don't recommend it, or you have to get Gray to do it, I don't recommend that either. Or... Or... Listening. In the Whispering Wood, there are those who Gray owes a favor. Each one has a fairy power. They can give you the word, the password, that will allow you to pass us. Though I doubt any will want to give it to you. Hmm. 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 How f do we have time to hit the Whispering Wood before uh, the fireworks are supposed to be set off tonight? Just barely. Okay. 
Okay. Will we have time to eat? Yes, we eat every hour. Oh, it's we're halfway. We're getting hungry. You know, it's about an hour journey to the Whisper. Okay. Hmm. Nah. So, I think we should try it, but it's up to you guys. I'm leaving this boat up to you. I'm. I, I like the sound of that. We can give it a I'm go. brave. I'm not afraid to go out. All right. Um, so, you um, part the fairies with your fairy word being now Mary. And um, eventually, the sound of merriment begins to fade behind you uh, as you pass through the fields. And um, you make it to the Thicket Wood Park along the trail leading into the Thicket Wood Forest. And here is the mor memorial that was set here. Um, here a halfling died some years ago. And um, by some strange arrangement between, that uh, caused quite um, it caused, caused quite a... Um, What's the, the halfling word I'm looking for? I, um, well, it was quite a, uh, a, a fuss. Um, this was... Um, there were two halflings that were thrown out of town. Uh, one of them, when they came back, Mayor Richfoot in insisted that... Um, when his body was laid to rest, that he'd be memorialized here. And you can see a statue. Um, let's see. Oh, I know. Of a halfling playing a song. Uh, there are elder halflings here relaxing on benches, some asleep. Um, even some young halflings that are taking in the wind uh, that is moving the leaves uh, as the wind travels into the pass between the forest. And uh, you can see the thicket wood ahead. Um, in fact, it goes straight into the dark forest trail. Um, it's about an hour's journey. And already your tummy is rumbling. Let us eat, and then we shall see if we can find these friends. Okay. Or these... Yeah. Uh, you have three options to eat. One would end the adventure, and you would fail at the conspiracy, so you wouldn't gain your, uh, your progression. Uh, you can return to the tavern, and for free, you can just have a good meal uh, and get all your stuff back. The other option is uh, you can... Do a fine meal upon the road, which only takes a moment, and you take something out of your knapsack and uh, just chow down on it briefly. And then the second option takes time. Uh, it takes uh, a full hour, um, and you... Uh, one serving of food drink. You get two points of comfort back by taking a full hour. So you can take either just a brief moment or a full hour. And uh, either way, you will expend one of your three foods that you have. See, we just have a quick bite to eat. Save our time. Mm -hmm. Very well. I mean, we can eat more when we get a chance. Now, um, as you travel upon the road... Um, afterwards, after enjoying, well, let's start with the picnic. Of course, half halflings have to stop and have a nice picnic. Um, can't travel a full hour without having a, uh, a meal break. Um. That would be unheard of. It's unheard of. It's, it's, it's preposterous. Um. And so, um, take out your food and enjoy it. You also have, if you brought any of the, uh, four types of foods, um, you can, uh, gain special benefits. 
Um, I do. I you... brought some something dainty to eat. Some what? spring rolls. Spring rolls. Whoa. Ooh. I also have something sweet. A parfait. Um. And, and I got wine too. Wow. It looks like you don't have to use any right now, but um, oh. they okay. end uh, they end a bad condition. Uh, however, I believe um, now uh, sharing a full meal. My brows. Uh, so I think you would actually end your merry condition because you are resting. However, because well, what I'm going to say is this counts as uh, sharing a meal because sadly we can't do that one thing. But I'm sure you would share uh, some of your um, your food. So um, everybody can maintain the merry condition for now. Uh, is what. Okay. So, um, you return to the uh, the trail. Uh, um, and this is where we would pick a guide. Each time that we uh, make a uh, attempt to travel, we'll pick a guide. I uh, forgot to do this in town, but you will Let's see. Here. Uh, you have to make a good sense action check. So, I'll just roll a D3. And the guide I have first, which I'll bring up at the top, is Brian Briarfoot. Okay. And then it'll be Daffodil and then Pluck. So, okay. uh, you're traveling along the road, and we're going to see if you sense whatever is about to happen and deal with it in advance. So, you'll want to roll a D20 uh, for a good sense check. Okay. I got a seven. Does that get under your uh, good senses? Good senses. Yeah. Uh, my good senses is eight, so yes. Excellent. Um, let's see. You keep the crew together, even though they're, uh, you know, and you keep them from being distracted from the various things. That there are many things to be distracted by. And uh, you're able to travel the full hour into the into the thicket wood. Then I'll describe what you see in the thicket wood. Oh, okay. Here you are, traveling in the forest, arduous, two hours, only a small snack break, if you can believe it. And um. You see three things, three signs in the forest. One is um, the hint in the distance, the blaring of a strange trumpet or some other musical device. And you think you hear arching. Secondly, um, you think you hear a, uh, a voice going, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, muttering to itself off in another direction. And then lastly, in another direction, you think you smell something cooking sweet. And the, uh, the wafting of a campfire, uh, it's, uh, it's smoke wafting your way in the forest trees. Ooh. Oh man, food. Oh, that's food sweet. Is a good temp yeah. <laughs> Mm. I'm tempted to go towards the food, but it sounds like someone is having a bit of a a Trouble. bit of a problem. Yeah. So, uh, the group guide is currently uh, Brian Briarfoot. Which do you choose? Um, let's go see who is be uh, a little bit worrisome. Who's saying, "Oh dear, oh dear." Okay. Um, you go deeper into the forest until you can uh, follow the voice that says, Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. And um, you see 
someone wearing a, um, a fine tunic. And uh, you thought, you think they might be a, um, a, a big person. Uh, they're the height of a big person. But as you get closer in the brush, you can see that uh, unlike their, the big person features of a face that are mostly like a halfling properly, instead there are curled horns. And their bottom half takes on the, uh, the features of a fawn. And uh, he seems to be searching the forest floor and doesn't seem to notice you. Um, excuse me, kind sir. Can we help you look for whatever it is you're trying to find? Oh, oh, oh dear, not more children. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh my, oh my, oh my. Oh, I can't take care of all of the children. Oh, I'm going to be in so much trouble. Oh. We're only here to help, and uh, we're looking we're... for friends of Mr. Gray. We're not children. We're almost grown. Hmm. <laughs> you seem awfully small to be almost grown. Well, we're halflings. Oh, that's right. Oh, well, then you're probably grown, aren't you? Almost. Oh, I see. Well, maybe I can... T you know Gray? Yeah. Oh, he's yeah. he's at, at our um, town right now. That wily old fool owes me. Well, anyways, um, yes, I was doing my duties of uh, traveling through children's dreams. And in one of them, I had uh, taken a, a, a toy that had started to become troublesome. Uh, but now I've lost it. Hmm, what does this toy look like? Oh, like a stuffed bear. A stuffed bear, okay. Any colors, or is it just brown like a normal bear? It's just brown. It had been untoward for the child, but um, but I must get it back to their dreams at least. Even if I had taken it away just for a moment. And you lost it somewhere around here? I don't know. Uh, maybe if I could have another toy. Uh, maybe a better toy. I'm, I'm good at carving toys out of wood. I don't think there's enough time. I mean, I might have one on me. Do you have a toy in your uh, that list? Um, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, we might be able to help you um, look for this toy, um, but do you know about something about fairies? Well, of course, I uh, am Mr. one. Oh. Well, we're having trouble. These fairies we were playing a word game with, they won't talk to us until we say some magic word that will let them talk to us from what they said. And they said that friends of Mr. Gray would know the word that they need. He strokes his... He's like, got a goatee. There's no way we're outsmarting the satyr. But... So I take it that you're interested in a bargain, is that right? It just so happens that I could use a bargain right now. Sure, I'll make a bargain with you. Very well. I need a toy. If you could find a good, but it must be a good and comforting toy, back perhaps in that village and bring it back to me, I will give you the password. Oh my. Um, hmm. Well, we're running a bit short on time. Um, what, what if we could help you find this toy? I've looked everywhere. I can't find it. Well, we could make you one. Didn't... We could try and make one, but you also didn't have three extra pair of eyes helping you look. Yeah, he goes like this. I'm okay. sure of it. I, I, it's. I know it's just a walk that way, but I can't just stride into the village. Um, you must be young enough to be able to see me. So, 
if you can run those little legs fast enough and get back there and get a toy and bring it back, I'll consider, then I'll give you the uh, password. And then Gray and I will be square, because that would be a proper prank on Gray. Well, all right, let me talk to my friends here and, you know, what do you guys think? I don't know if we'd have enough time to go back and forth. You have time, yeah, to be clear. Just oh, enough okay. time, yeah, before the night falls. Well, does anyone have, okay, either that or if anyone has string, we could make a doll. I'm, I'm or just if a we were able to use I don't want Because I have a bag of bird seed, which could be used to make a doll. We would just need some string and little bubbles. Hmm. What I have on me? I forgot. I literally just have a, a bottle of wine and a... Well, not no more wine, but I do have a corkscrew. I do. I have a coil rope. And a saw. Hmm. Okay. Uh, this will be quite difficult, but the the uh, the satyr says, "Well, I'm I don't have quite the time for this, but you show me since you are toy makers." He assumes you're actual toy maker. Make me a toy, and the deal will be done. Does anybody want to attempt it? Uh, what role would we might be able to? This is a cunning check, and um, you will add plus four to the result as you're dealing with a mischievous fairy. And that would be under our cleverness? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got cleverness of nine. Does Brian have to roll that since he's the guide right I now? have 11. No, anybody could roll it. But I'd have to roll like a, what, a seven or under? There's a chance. I mean, you have the higher cleverness. If we fail this, do we still have time to run back to town, or are we toast then? Yeah, I think we would have time. I mean, it doesn't take long to make a toy out of string or a coil of rope. Oh, no, you take the bird seed and you can, like, I've done it in Girl Scouts, so I kind of know how to do it. Same. But you can oh, you use, like, like, a couple little sticks. And take some cloth. If you smooth the edges and, and the rope and the bag with the seed in it for stuffing. All right. And um, take berries and make a face with it. Uh, daffodil. And you roll. can use grass or uh, leaves for her. Roll a cleverness check. Or cunning check. D20. Uh, you'll add a plus four to the result. Come on, D20 be a good roll. Where's my roll? And what is your cunning? Oh, seven. You did it? I got a five. Plus four is nine. I got you a five. It. You put together the most marvelous. Uh, it actually it comes together perfectly to be like a grass corn husk doll. Uh, combined with berries and all the other sorts of things. It almost looks as if it were made by a craftsman. Um and uh, he looks at it and smiles, and he says, I think this will work very well. I'll give you the password. And um, he leans over, and he gives you another fairy word that only you can hear, only you can say. Oh, man. And uh, gives okay. it to, uh, he gives it to uh, Daffodil. Yeah. Makes sense. All right. So, um, return back on your journey. Unfortunately, a uh, an hour has passed, and um, you're quite famished. So you lose a second <gasps> comfort. Oh no. Or I think it. Yeah, second comfort. That's right. Yep. Comfort. Another set of comfort. Now, now you can stop and wait if you wish, uh, and you can have another. It'll be meal. worth it though if we can get fireworks. You want to forgo the comfort? Go go with four comfort. Ah, and in fact, the uh, the guide is now daffodil. 
And there you go. Oh dear. It's up to you, Daffodil. <laughs> uh, well, if we run into a problem, we could always stop and have a meal in town, I think. That is true, that is true. What do true. you think? We get to see if we get back to town, and then... Yeah, you got it. So you start traveling back. And um, as you travel through the forest and make your way back to the path, the uh, the wind rustles. Uh, it's a, uh, a very mild summer day uh, with a gentle breeze and a bright blue sky. And uh, the trees in the thicket wood are lush and green in the summer. Um, and um, there are many birds that have taken to spying on you as you pass beneath them. And uh, you'll make another good sense check. Oh yeah. Do 20? Yeah, to roll under your... Is it good sense? No. What? That yep. makes sense. Good senses. Did it roll? So something passes outside her notice. Let's see what it is. No, no, out. Oh, she froze. I'm distracted by mushrooms. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, roll a d20. Um, you have started to travel through uh, a thick part of the thicket wood. You take a different path back. It's not working. And it tears open your packs. And each of you lose one meal. You oh, have no. one meal left. Um, so sad. Yep. So here you are, hungry and tired. It is... It's ridiculous, the thought of three halflings going on a three, four hour long adventure into the thicket wood. This is, this is unheard of. Going without food for two hours. And uh, here you are, you only have one full meal left on you. Um, and you make it back onto the trail. And the first place you come to in the next hour once again back at the park. Now we're back in town. I was supposed to do this the first time. Roll another good sense check. Oh, I forgot to mention before you do that. Hold that. Don't don't tell me what the result is. Uh, while you're on the journey, okay. I forgot to mention. Uh, you still see the two things uh, on either side of the path. There is the smell of something sweet cooking and a campfire wafting your way and the sound of it sounds like hooves and things beating the ground as if marching and some strange tooting instrument. just want to offer that. But I believe you're on, your, uh, on a mission to get back to the fireworks, right? Yeah. The meal smells good. But if I get distracted with food, I'll never get the fireworks done, and I'll just sit and eat whatever. Right. <laughs> okay. So, um, if anyone asks, we were hunting for mushrooms, and we ate plenty of food. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh, what did you roll on your e on your good sense check? Horribly. Oh no! Roll a d twenty. <laughs> Uh, I don't like these dice today. They need to go into timeout. Oh, I I got a seven. Is that good? Seven. Or no? All right. Let's... Okay. 
Um, a halfling boy. You recognize this boy. He's a bit of a legend in town. He was quite young some years ago, and he became lost in this very thicket wood. And he, and he, and he hops upon uh, a, a nearby bench, puts his hands on his hips, and he says, You're about to half jink. I know it when I see it. Why, yeah. yes, we are. Oh, yeah. How do you know this? I'm Kobe, and I know a half jink when I see it. Toe tuffet, bindle stick, briarfoot. So I tell you what, you'll help. You'll let me in on the half jink, or I'll go and tell the sheriff right now. How do we let you in? Oh, you tell me what's going on, and I get to I get to be right at the the front of whatever you're doing. Oh, that's easy. Mr. Gray's in town for a birthday party, and he brought a bunch of fireworks. And we want to set them off early before anybody else can get them set up proper. Well, that won't be no easy thing. He's got a few fairies on his on his wagon this year because it was a half jink just a couple years ago with somebody messing around with the fireworks. And they, well, ended, no, that's they, they ended up scorching two toes off. Our friend Ooh. Daffodil here has the... A fairy word that we might use to to get the fairies away. Where did you get a fairy word? Mm, you can't tell me. <laughs> well, Did indeed. It. But have you not been, have you not talked to a fairy before? He hops off the bench and he he starts walking right alongside of you, skipping along. No, not really. That fairy word won't be enough. They have their own mischief they're up to, and they'll try to match yours. You gotta get past their mischief, too, even if you got that fairy word. <gasps> well, how do we do that? Can you show us? Or help us? Well, you just gotta be awful clever. Ooh. Our friend Daffodil well, here is pretty clever. Yes, she is. The cleverest among us. Well, I'll tell you what. I don't mean to be mean about it, but I'll watch you. I'll watch you back, and I'll make sure that nobody, none of those bounders come up and and, uh, and mess with us. And I'll lead them off. But, you gotta let me light the fireworks. As long as you light them, you can do them, I think. What do you think, you guys? I mean, we could use I'm fine when I'm lighting them. I just want to see them go off. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we just want to set them off. If you want to light them, that's all fine. As long as they get lit. Well, all right. And we get to see it. I hope I can see you all get past these fairies. And you start walking back to town. And you make it about this far. And your tummy is grumbling something awful. Oh, man, we need That's to so eat. Hungry. It's been a third hour. The sun is setting in the sky. We should, we should probably eat. You want to have You want to have a... Uh, what? Do we have time to eat? You can always... Uh, it does take a little bit of time. Uh, it's called a fine meal upon the road. You can take a moment to do. Uh, I will require a good sense check, but you'll get your uh, you'll get a a single comfort back, and you'll expend your last meal. Oh man, our last meal. <laughs> um. Well, we're in town. What do you we boys say? You gonna go? It's do or go home and get some good food, okay? We're desperate. I think we should eat. We're hungry. Okay. We get... Yeah, no. My good sense checks are failing. Okay, so <laughs> let, let's see while you're having this picnic what, what happens here. Now, this Another probably happens wants to join in. <laughs> Roll a d20, let's see. <laughs> Oh dear. Hoping Pluck has better luck with the dice. Ten. Ten. Okay. Um. Oh dear. <laughs> oh no. It's Mr. Gray himself. Oh, no. <laughs> You're making your way back. Then there's the old frog pond off to the side. 
And um, there's a couple of young halflings that are having about their own half jink out there. Oh no! <laughs> it's uh, it's young Brun Brunhild Bramblethorn. The and Brandlethorn. Brandlethorn. It well, it's worse. Is uh, the Brand Brandlethorn is 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 a taken up with old Mary with with the uh, old young Mary Old Lake. Uh, Mary a Doc Old Lake, and they're having a tryst out there in a boat that they've made. Ooh, and spicy. Yes, it's quite scandalous. Um, I really need my list of different types of. I have a, you know, in Grand Theft Auto, you have the star system. Yes. I have one of those for Halfling Shires, and it's like, uh, it's like, hubbub. Hoot nanny and like there's like a different there's different levels like I got I should have had it gosh dang it well anyways that's perfect for yeah. this this one's gonna be bad if people find it out but what's worse um uh let me actually see there's a couple of things here I won't go too far into half wing politics <laughs> I have a bunch of I do like some good gossip um. Uh, we can't have our picnic and enjoy some good tea. You're trying, but it gets ruined by some things that happen. So let's see here. First of all, Brunhild Bramblethorn was uh, seen in town, and you saw it. Brian, I'm sorry, no, this is Pluck. Pluck, by the way, you'll be the next guide. Pluck. While he was making fun of you and putting on an impression of Pluck Bindlestick. And everybody was a laughing. Mm. <gasps> oh. What the heck? I know. And, um. <laughs> get one more halfling alt political complication here. Uh, what's worse. So, this was Brunhild. I'm sorry, no, no, no. Mary, Mary Doc, the boy, okay, that did this. Brunhild's father is the town barber. The Bramblethorns have been given haircuts for a long time. And Elderman Dingleby got an awful bad haircut. And it has <sighs> caused, he has not left his small on account of it in a week. And he refused to take part in the Rebels. And the reason this matters is these two are already right at the center of causing all kinds of trouble in town. And they are freaking out because um, they're stuck in the boat. And they thought it'd be romantic, but actually it's quite scary and they can't swim. And they're flailing their arms and they're about to capsize the boat. If you all don't do something about it, that, oh, man. that might be fine. Home. That might be fine if you let, you know, if, but yes, of course, no hobbit, no halfling has ever allowed, an, no halfling has ever killed another halfling before. It's never happened. Um, whether, you know, by incident or murder or any kind, uh, they always help one another. And besides that, they see you on about your half jink. Oh, no. Well, wait, they just see that we're just in town back on our way back through town. They don't know if we're on a half jink, right? Oh, they know you're on a half jink because they'll we Kobe. Were, we were looking Kobe's for mushrooms. Mm. Yeah. They, they're uh, yelling out. They're like, you're on about oh, a half jink. Right. You, you better a help. You better help. And they're rocking the boat <laughs> <laughs> on the pond. Dang it. <laughs> I guess we better go help. We're going to have to help. <laughs> Even though this guy made fun of me, uh, you know, we gotta help. And, yeah, I would say we reluctantly help. Now, this is after a meal, so you're not merry anymore. So, uh, to help, um, uh, pluck Bindlestick, you'll need to make a... Uh, 
bravery? A, uh, yeah, bravery check. Ooh, I got good bravery. May the, oh. may the dice be better for you than mine were, because mine sucked. <laughs> I did not roll under my bravery today. Oh, no. Um, it, this causes an absolute scene. And uh, you end up caught just about drowning yourself. And they end up about a drowning and everybody's a yelling. And it takes two outsiders, uh, two big people that are traveling by, to come in and save and pull you all, pull you all out of the water. It turns out if you had just let your feet down a little bit, you probably would have been fine. And uh, they just pull you up. Most of your stuff is ruined and soaked. Uh, everyone is awfully embarrassed, uh, and you lose one comfort. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, but did we gain one from eating? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, so you went just, back to five. Now you're back to four, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, now... Uh, Mary, old Lake, he looks at you and he, he's, he's covered in water and stuff. And he says, maybe best we just not tell anybody about this. Yeah, mum's the word. Okay. You don't tell nobody about us and we yeah, won't tell amen. nobody about you. We're just out here looking for mushrooms. We won't tell anybody about you and you don't tell anybody about us. And we're looking for mushrooms. We didn't see a thing. And we yeah, fell in the didn't pond. See a thing. All of us at once, and that's why we're wet. And I'm looking for yes. mushrooms. And then they like awkwardly like stomp off backwards <laughs> a while and finally leave. I put that in my Look gossip at the bank. bank people go by. For later. You didn't see nothing either. <laughs> yeah, we can use that later. Um <clears throat> Kobe pats you on your wet back, um, Pluck, and says, uh, That's all right. Ain't no halfling can, sli- can swim. Well, they were dumb to get off in that boat anyway. Mm-hmm, true. Well, <clears throat> best we go on. Now, this takes some time. Uh, <laughs> so, this is how this can spiral out of control. This takes All this takes time. So now you come up on the fourth hour. The sun is about to set. Oh. And, you're, and you're hungry <laughs> again. <laughs> oh no, we're out of food. And you have no food, so you each lose one comfort. Oh my god. <laughs> now you can go get food, but that will take time. Uh, and, the, and the pies at the extra help again just smell amazing. And uh, mm. there's all kinds of wonderful drinks and treats and things. Also, you all, if you brought food, you can employ that now. You can, like, say, hey, I want to take a, a fine meal upon the road, and I'm going to use my, my treat. Ooh. Um, also, by the way, you can always get advantage on a roll if you employ a condition. That's always an option. So. Hmm. Do you guys want to... I got a honey bun. I mean, how much time do we have before these fireworks actually go off? You're running out of time. Well, if we're using real... <laughs> are we using our real food or real treat that we brought? I had chocolate chip oatmeal, but like a hobbit, I ate it all. <laughs> <laughs> we're like... Mm. Okay, chocolate chip oatmeal. Yeah, what, which one is that one for you? Um... That would be my something sweet, and then my dainty treat. I have a little little stick of like dried berry fruit. I got everything really with meat. Oh, and you're also yeah, you we're guys are out of hungry. meat. I forgot about that. But this is good. So if had you not done, had you not eaten it, that's funny. Does that count? Like then, if you already ate it, you're like I already ate it. I don't, that's so hobbitish too. But <laughs> no, I'll, I'll say that that counts, right? So like, um, yeah, it counts. Yeah, yeah. Not the bowl is proof, but it was good. So being hungry means you can't gain advantage on anything um, until you eat, essentially. So that's not a big deal. But but the sweet says that you clear the hungry condition, uh, but you don't get your comfort back. Uh, you just you just clear the hungry condition. So you you can gain advantage on things. And that's important because you can decide, hey, I'll take a condition in order to get advantage on this role if there's something important. 
So that's that's what you get for eating your food. Does anybody else want to eat any of their I, food? I was going to have some nice cured salami, but that went today. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a honey bun. I'm going to eat that. Actually, we should eat the food. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you guys mm -hmm. clear your hunger condition, but you still have. I think each of you have four comfort, except for uh, Pluck has three. I think. Oh. So, all right. All right, so that takes some time. You eat food. Um, so, Pluck, if you could make a, a good sense check as you uh, have a, a picnic on the road as you eat your food and you get rid of the hunger condition and then you get back to it. Well, yeah. this, this game is just about like how you have to have a snack every so often. Or else. <laughs> this is seriously yeah. like Minecraft survival mode on hard. You're like, oh, cool, this is a cool spot. Oh, wait, I'm starving. Let's eat. Oh, look, I need to get wood. Oh, I'm starving. <laughs> yeah, I rolled, I rolled a two, so I'm, I rolled under. I'm good. Awesome. Yeah, you're able to see what's going on. And, and in fact, you see Kobe is good at good for his word. And he's having a proper conversation uh, with two of the bounders. And they're, they are laughing, and he's telling jokes. Oh. And he's got their attention off elsewhere. I think we got a distraction going on, guys. So as much as your comfort has reduced in this grand journey that you've been upon, your mischief hasn't gone up yet, which is kind of cool. Um, your mischief has remained at zero. So uh, he's helping do that, and you return to the fairies who uh, hop back off the cart, and they say, Well... <laughs> well... Oh... We got, uh, we might have gotten the word that you were looking for. Daffodil knows the word. I, uh, if you know the word and you got it, I'll give you the fireworks. But you still got to play our game. <laughs> and, um, you have two options. Uh, you can try to play their game. Or you can roll for it. Now, um, you'll get the result either way. But if you roll for it, you'll lose comfort. Ooh. What will we gain? Fireworks. Uh, you, uh, you have to. They, they're saying that they'll only take the word if you play their game. So they start in on one of their ah. things. They, one of them says, "What is so fragile that when you speak of it, it breaks?" Oh, I know this I one. I know this yeah. one. This one is silence. Or uh, quiet he, silence. He, he stomps his feet and gets kind of pouty. Ugh. She knew that one. All right. All right. <laughs> A fun one. Okay. <laughs> Forwards, I'm heavy. Backwards, I'm not. What am I? Mm. Forwards, I'm heavy. Backwards, I'm not. Terrible at riddles. Terrible. Oh, think about the riddle. Forwards, I'm heavy. Backwards, Backwards I'm, I'm not. not. What's it's like? Speak, friend, and enter. I can't remember what it's called in English language where you reverse the word. Yeah, but is it a ton? stomps he gets he has a tantrum no. now he's like no 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 he stomps around and then the other one just looks at his friend and he's like well, uh, all right here's this one lose me once i'll come back stronger lose me twice i'll leave forever Ooh. Lose me once, I'll come back stronger. Lose me twice, and I'm gone forever. Hmm. I'm so bad at these. I want to say trust, but that's not it. No. Hmm. Hmm. Um, and you can you can roll if you want. It'll be a group roll, and it'll be done a group roll, and anybody can do it though. This would be a uh, what is the second one of the cleverness? 
Yeah, cleverness, yeah. Mm. That would be daffodil. Thinking still. Well, I can make the roll, and then if you, you can tell that you it. almost have them, and whatever like secret agreement they have that they're about to run out, if you can get it. Just me once. Is it a tooth? He uh, he just slumps. The other one is just stomping mad around, and, <laughs> and the other one just the other one just like slumps. He's like, "What's the fairy word?" <laughs> he leans Some forward of... and whispers the fairy word into their ears. Yeah, the secret with like fairy a little giggle that, that only uh, only she can speak and only she will know, and never again will the word ever be spoken. And um, what follows um, is them stepping away from the wagon. And you can see upon it just an awful, awful mess of explosives and fireworks and rockets that you've ever <laughs> seen. More than any other year that Gray has come by. Oh man, this is a. I bet there's 111. While this happens, Pluck is climbing up on top of a rooftop. And. Because he's got good balance and he starts to make some speech and blah, 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 blah. Just goes on and on about. Whatever. We should signal um, Kobe. Yeah, what 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 are you trying to do with the speech? Just to get a distract, just get everybody's attention because you're about to light them off. Oh wait, we didn't light them yet. I thought you said they went off. I'm no. holding that action. We oh, you're, are you going to do it after they light off? After. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Kobe comes by and he's like, "All right, a deal's a deal." Yeah, go Kobe. on and light them, Kobe. That's the big one. Get the big one. So you guys yeah. take armfuls and he stop. He, you, they have to like go down in the ground and they go into pipes and all this kind of stuff. And you set them up and you put them all together so they go off at once. And like <laughs> tie up the thing. It gets ready to light it. And then uh, the town hall opens and an old wise and wizard comes out with the town mayor. And he looks over and you just see him like aghast. He's like, you troublesome halflings. <laughs> and then it lights it. It's like nuclear fire. It's like an entire entire hillside is destroyed. And there's just this just like claymore explosion where like this stuff lifts off into the air and for all of the kingdom of Delrada saw this horrible magical explosion that took off a hillside that year at Bundo's 111th birthday. And you guys gained three mischief, except for uh, Brian, who, who, I'm sorry, for uh, Pluck, who gains four mischief because, yes. uh, because of your speech. And uh, Yeah, I'm just kind of going on. Sure I'm it going... wasn't a chicken in the mailbox, so you know... <laughs> I'm just making this speech about our adventure and how, you know, Dandelville got the, the magic word and and we we saved people from drowning but didn't mention their names. And blah, blah. I'm just going on, kind of recounting what had just took it's place. very and, improper and kind of, halfling behavior. <laughs> and trying to, you know, say, you know, we are the half. Jinx Masters. <laughs> and you are. And that's where our adventure will end for the evening.